Hello guys, welcome to another interesting video from Engine Nation. In this video, today we'll tell why Russia's space agency and authorities are desperately trying to get Elon Musk to start his operation in Russia. Stay tuned with us till the end, this is gonna get very exciting. Russia's space agencies are watching as billionaires Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson launch themselves into space and mark the beginning of private space travel, wishing Russian oligarchs would do the same and further the country's national interests. Our billionaires prefer to invest in yachts rather than spaceships, Dmitry Rogozin, Roscosmos' director general, told CNN in his first interview with Western media since taking office. However, it's possible that the children of present Russian billionaires will be far wiser than their parents. Rogozin is fascinated by the United States' booming space tourism sector, which includes Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, which are both owned by Jeff Bezos. I like what you people are doing, Rogozin remarks, people who spend their own money on activities that benefit society as a whole. Rogozin, on the other hand, saves his best praise for Elon Musk, the inventor of SpaceX, and blames his own country's standstill in space on the instability that followed the Soviet Union's collapse. Mr. Elon Musk achieves many of the concepts and thoughts that we intended to realize but were unable to do so since our space program was suspended for some time following the breakup of the Soviet Union, Rogozin stated. We look forward to him as a space industry organizer and an inventor who isn't afraid to take chances. Rogozin has even invited Musk to visit his family in Russia and talk about exploring the universe, alien life, and how we might use space to protect life on Earth. I've already started heating up the tea kettle, Rogozin said. But Rogozin and Musk haven't always had such a friendly relationship. Rogozin posted images on Twitter and Facebook in December showing Roscosmos workers finding a component of a Soyuz rocket in Russia's much further Yakutia area, surrounded by snow. This is not Boca Chica, Rogozin said, referring to the tiny Texas border town where SpaceX is building Starship the world's largest and most powerful rocket. In the winter, Yakutia looks like this. I'm curious if mild SpaceX can operate under such settings. Musk has proved to be as capable of delivering a subtle, precise criticism, though SpaceX declined to comment for this story. The United States sanctioned Rogozin in 2014 for his position as Russia's Deputy Prime Minister for Defense during the annexation of Crimea from Ukraine. Sanctions were also imposed on Russia's space sector, as rocket technology is frequently used in nuclear missiles. After reviewing the sanctions imposed on our space industry, I proposed to the United States that their astronauts be transported to the International Space Station by trampoline, Rogozin said on Twitter. After the space shuttle fleet was retired, NASA was completely reliant on Russian Soyuz rockets to transport American astronauts to the International Space Station. Last year, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft flew NASA astronauts for the first time in over a decade from American soil. Musk eventually reacted to Rogozin's years-old statement shortly after the successful launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, stating, The trampoline is functioning. Roscosmos's budget has been slashed by billions as a result of SpaceX's new trampoline. Between 2011 and 2019, NASA is thought to have spent roughly $4 billion to Roscosmos for seats on Soyuz rockets. However, Rogozin claims that the payments were made in good faith. A blip on the horizon, the assistance we gave to the American astronauts was priceless. Roscosmos is now working on the Amur, a reusable rocket that was pioneered by SpaceX and Blue Origin that can land safely on Earth after launching its first stage into orbit. Rogozin intends to get it ready to launch by 2025, and compares it to SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket as regular healthy engineering rivalry. Roscosmos is also developing a new engine, the RD-169, to power the Amur rocket. Russia has a long and illustrious history as a global leader in the manufacture of rocket engines. Even Musk said in 2019 that Russia has great rocket engineering and the best engine currently flying. But he didn't specify which engine he was referring to. In reality, American rockets are still launched into orbit using Russia's decades-old RD-180 engines. For over two decades, United Launch Alliance, a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin, has purchased Russian-made engines and used them to drive its Atlas V rocket. 
The Atlas V is one of the most dependable rockets in the world, and it's utilized by the U.S. Air Force, the National Reconnaissance Office, and NASA to launch satellites and secret payloads into orbit. Senator John McCain, who led the campaign to prohibit the Pentagon from acquiring launches on RD-180 powered vehicles beyond 2021, was outraged by the questionable practices of purchasing Russian-made engines for these missions. To rid the alliance of its dependence on the RD-180, it teamed up with Blue Origin to develop the American-made BE-4 engine to power its new Vulcan rocket. Although Blue Origin's engine is years behind schedule, EULA CEO Tony Bruno stated in August at the Space Symposium that the first flight-ready BE-4 engines should arrive by the end of the year. Rogozin isn't convinced. We realize these engines are a long way from being able to replace the RD-180, Rogozin added. Russian engines should be purchased in the future. They are really cheap. A request for comment from Blue Origin was not answered. Nonetheless, Rogozin has invited Branson, Bezos, and Musk to the launch of a Soyuz spacecraft from Kazakhstan's Baikonur Cosmodrome in October. Here's why Russia's space head continues to invite Elon Musk to pay him a visit. Elon Musk is desperately wanted by the head of Russia's space program. Dmitry Rogozin has asked Elon Musk, the creator of SpaceX, to visit Kazakhstan for the launch of the Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft, transporting three Russians to the International Space Station on October 5th. Rogozin garnered a lot of attention lately when he asked Musk to visit his house in Russia during a CNN interview. Musk was cryptic in his reaction on Twitter. It's a fool's errand to try to forecast Elon Musk's behavior, but given his legitimate security worries, the billionaire is unlikely to meet Rogozin in Russia or attend the launch in Kazakhstan. Rogozin's invitation may even be seen as ominous. The tea kettle remark is reminiscent of the assassination of Alexander Litvinenko, a former KGB officer who fled to the UK in 2000 after growing critical of Vladimir Putin's ascent to power. Litvinenko was poisoned six years after leaving Russia by drinking polonium-laced tea. Three weeks later, he died, and Western intelligence agencies finally determined that the poisoning was carried out by Russian agents with Putin's permission. As a result, Musk is unlikely to visit Russia. He's also unlikely to share a cup of tea with Dmitry Rogozin. However, it's worth attempting to understand Rogozin's reasons for reaching out to Musk in this manner. What does Dmitry Rogozin want? Rogozin has had a passive-aggressive relationship with Musk since becoming the head of Roscosmos in 2018. Rogozin has often reacted to SpaceX's achievements with swagger and bluster, claiming that the company's engineers are too kind, or that the company's rockets and spacecraft are too dangerous for Russian cosmonauts to fly on. Simultaneously, Rogozin has witnessed SpaceX destroy key income sources for Russia's space sector. Most significantly, Personnel Dragon has eliminated NASA's annual payment of $400 million to Roscosmos for crew transport services to the International Space Station. Moreover, SpaceX fought for a federal rule prohibiting United Launch Alliance from purchasing Russian T-rocket engines. Finally, the low-cost Falcon 9 rocket has reduced the Russian Proton rocket's commercial launch industry, which currently launches about once a year. So what's the point of making amends with Musk now? Firstly, Vergozin and Russia's space program might bask in Musk's reflective glory if he could convince him to visit him in Russia. Musk has a deep admiration for Soviet rocketry, spending an hour at SpaceX's headquarters recently with Sergei Korolev's grandson. During such a visit, Musk would definitely praise Russia's space program. Vergozin might present himself as an equal by meeting with Musk. For him and Russia's crumbling space program, this would be crucial propaganda. Secondly, attracting Musk to the upcoming Soyuz launch is certainly just as crucial to Rogozin, if not more so. This is because Rogozin and Roscosmos have put a lot of money on this journey, which will be flown by cosmonaut Anton Shkaplerov and carry Yulia Perisild and film director Klim Shapenko as passengers. The actress and director will spend roughly 10 days shooting a film called The Challenge inside the International Space Station. 
a space film. This film project has generated outrage among Russia's cosmonaut corps, since it has resulted in a fast rescheduling of flight plans, with the film's money coming from the Space Corporation's budget. Rogozin, on the other hand, places a high importance on the film, as he is anxious to have something to show in the 60th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's momentous first space flight in April 1961. The initiative is essential to exhibit Russian technology and to bring the attention of the world societies to the jubilee of Yuri Gagarin's flight," said veteran astronaut Fyodor Yurchikin in an interview with Novaya Gazeta earlier this year. As a result, it must be completed by April 12, 2022. Having Elon Musk attend the premiere of the Challenge Film project would provide Rogozin with the glitz and attention he desires as he attempts to create a Hollywood-style image of Russia's space program rather than a Potemkin village image. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content and updates. See you in the next video. Bye!